Hello. It's the time of the week to review last week's YouTube comments. Oh, I picked some really good ones this time. I, there is some spice. We love spice. And I hope you guys enjoy the spice too. If you guys want to be in a comment video, go leave a comment on one of my videos. And you might, you might just get into the video if I like your comment or if it's decisive enough or if it's just rude. Yeah, you might get in there. You just might. So uh, we'll start with Josh Pyme here. POV Farquad goes shopping online for Digimon cards is a really great, interesting reaction to my behind the scenes market watch video because I wasn't really shopping for cards, but like that's it was a POV movie a video, which is really cool. Uh, Analog Wizard, hee hee, poo poo, amazing, very insightful. Please keep the series going. And we got uh, Uncanny. Let me get to see your reaction to Wonky at 50. So the, uh, the behind the scenes market watch was a fun video to make, and a lot of people liked the video. But I didn't get that many views. Uh, so I'm probably not going to do another behind the scenes POV video. It was a good one shot. A nice little piece of history for sure. But, uh, you know, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it if you did enjoy it. And if you didn't enjoy it, you'll never have to see it again. And that's uh, that's okay. Not a big deal. We'll go next to Gucci Bra. Wonky pre-release option getting sold by Overdose Gaming. They for sure overdosing all right. WTF LOL. Indeed, a $900 Wonky is a bit much... It's, it's really dumb. Like, it's actually stupid. Actually a waste of time. And they should feel bad. Pay the troll. Those boxes are definitely not worth opening, but across time 72, I feel like it's hard to lose money. When it was at 67, it was nearly net guaranteed net positive. Uh, pay the troll has an interesting theory, but doesn't back up his claims. Um, he talks about across time, and I agree with that one. That one's a really good box to open at $72. That's also a good thing to open. Uh, the option I provided, though, the BT-11, I can't even remember anymore. The the EX set? EX set, definitely not. The uh, BT-11, definitely could see some value there. I think it was BT-11. I There's a there's a good chance I'm forgetting what box I said was okay at 72 bucks. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, just be always be careful of sealed product, right? Always do your research. Try to get a value for it. Because some people just like opening boxes, right? Like, get that serotonin with the pack opening and all that. It makes sense, and I completely agree. Uh, it's definitely a fun thing to do. But just try to be smart about it, right? There's no reason to just blow your money on nothing, basically. Mohammed Nasrallah 6942 sold my Shine Greymon for $80 for his playset. Glad I made some money on a future band deck. This guy here is saying, yeah, BT12 markers might get hit. I don't want to see the deck anymore. GG's. That's it. And uh, I, honestly, honestly, it's fine. I don't blame him for selling him at 20 because now there are 10. So good value. Really good value here. Grand Pacha, Mars, I had an idea. I've peaked. Yes, if I say you have a good idea, you probably have a good idea. The uh, behind the scenes video, again, was really, really fun to make, for sure. Uh, Takatran, before we get Ghost Rares, can we get new guard artworks for lottery cards? BT13 were awful. Just a zoom in on the V2 art. Not sure if they're able to pull in any less work. Well, they can. Have you seen like the impact cards? They, they definitely can put in what less work. But I do agree that the alt arts should change. Like, by now I'm sure you guys have seen the uh, new regional artworks, the old alt alternate arts. Those are really good artworks. They could just do that and give it a really nice shine and call it a day. And I think Ghost Rays would be really cool. Like, real Ghost Rays in Digimon, I would love that. That'd be really, really, really exciting. Uh, Ghost Rays are always awesome to pull up, but they're so hard to pull. From Anime Lover Haven. What's super interesting is that back in my Yu-Gi-Oh! days... I never had an issue pulling ghost rares or lottery cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. Digimon? F forget it. I pulled the one Rosemon Burst Modes lottery card ever, and that was it. Straight up. Uh, Digimon and me, we don't get along well with lottery cards. But Yu-Gi-Oh, I could pull them all the time. You know, and, and they're worth more technically in the Yu-Gi-Oh side. I remember when Rise of the Duelist came out. The set with the droplets and the, th and the talents. Uh, I pulled the Starlight Road DD Crow, sold for just under a thousand bucks on release. You cannot do that with most Digimon lottery cards ever. So it was really, really cool to see. But yeah. All right. You got two comments, this Muhammad guy. Really cool. Now, I, I'm going to dedicate some of the comments here to the Is Digimon Actually Dying video? Because that got the most views. It got the most responses. And I think you guys will be surprised at some of these comments. The game is definitely growing, and we're in the Middle East, so that's something. But unfortunately, we don't have the support from Bandai yet, but once we do, we're definitely going to be to the moon of Digimon. And I also hope they grow. I do hope they grow in the Middle East, because I know that that area is lacking. 
So hopefully the Bandai can support you guys a little bit better. We got Adam Garingo 7607 After how successful BT13 has been, most opens set the date. I had fun with variety. There's in the format. I think we're doing okay. People are very split on BT13, but people are not split on BT13 because of the cards in the set. They're split because of the set duration. Basically, it's BT13 for four months with Rising Winds or Surgeon's Booster in the English language. Um, kind of throwing a fresh breath of air into that, but it's only three decks, and two of them will see meta play consistently, or somewhat consistently. The green one won't really see play. So it's basically still going to be BT13. And then people are also bored with Ultimate Cup. So, like, I don't think people are disappointed in BT13. I know BT13 sold like crazy. It's just, I think the duration and a couple of choices by Bandai are making it kind of spoiled. That's all. That's all on that. Next comment. Kaz. I think as a game, yes, but Bandai needs to be better at supporting events, online or not. And it needs to show the community that they want the game to thrive instead of the bare bones it's giving now. I do agree with this. I think that the support that Bandai is giving to tournaments and TOs for Digimon in particular is just not enough. You know, I, I've said those multiple times. I'll say it again. This Ultimate Cup, uh, the one that we just played on Saturday, did not fill up. Not even close to filling up. People are getting turned off. They need more fluid prize support. They need better prize support. And they need a format people are interested in playing in for real. It's just that simple, right? I think that Ultimate Cup pricing can rotate every three months. You know what I mean? Like, imagine, just imagine. Instead of Gallantmon for the whole year, they do Gallantmon for the, the first wave of Ultimate Cups. Then in the second wave of Ultimate Cups, it's something else. And the next wave of Ultimate Cups, it's something else. And they change it every three months. That would entice players more and more to play. The problem with that, though, is uh, A, they'd have to pay for artists to do more cards. That's a small issue. But B, they would have to have more Ultimate Cups. The reason for that is because if there were only three Ultimate Cups in North America and you wanted a, a playset of a card that was prize support, it means you couldn't get it. You know what I mean? Like, if you wanted Gallantmon Crimson Mode, let's say that was a card that you played four copies of, and there are only three Ultimate Cups, yeah, that'd be a problem. And then even if you won three and the last guy that won one didn't want to sell it, well, you're kind of screwed on that field, right? So I get why they do it. I think a happy compromise is maybe six. But then there's also all the other regions in the world having Ultimate Cups too. So I don't think it's a really big deal. But I do think people would be more enticed to play if they did just constantly change the prize. But they do with regionals. I think we've gotten, what, three different waves of regionals support? Like different prize packs? In 2023? I think. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know. At least two, but I think three. And like they could do that for Ultimate Cups too. And that would be really cool. So why don't they do that with Ultimate Cups? I don't really know. Ultimate Cups are just getting stale. You know, the first ones this year sold out no problem. The second wave, not really. This wave is already, it's in the toilet, basically. So things to keep in mind, right? Feedback that Bandai could be passed along. This is my favorite comment of the week. Is Digimon actually dying now? But Beyond the Bat says no, but your channel is. First of all, it's the wrong your. Uh, he wrote it as no, but you are channel is. So he's incompetent. It's the wrong your. Um, but on top of that, it's these comments. You know, these people that... Um, I feel sorry for them. Because if they feel the need to be like a keyboard warrior and try to just ruin someone else's day, clearly there's something going on in their life. So I feel bad. And my life isn't perfect either. I have My life is pretty shitty, honestly. But on that note, I'm not here trolling people in my comments section. I could say a lot of things to a lot of different people. I could, but that's not really pr productive. Just leaving a YouTube comment like that does nothing, so I don't believe in doing that. But this comment is actually something I want to talk about in a larger grand scheme of things. So I'm going to cover it briefly right now. Um, yes, my YouTube channel has seemed to hit a stagnation point. The only Digimon channels grow, I think Digimon, like the channels that put out Digimon content, like 95% of the time, evolved because his videos are just like edited the best. 
and the Japanese channels, like East and, uh, that, the guy that makes the gameplay videos, I can't remember the name, yeah, you guys know, leave it in the comments, we've watched them on stream before, but, um, like, those channels make sense that they're growing, because it's always the newest stuff, TCG, by the time it gets over here, it's not new anymore, right? But by, when they get it announced over there, it is new. So people are generally more excited. There's more room to grow. Um, so my channel, uh, it's been no surprise. It's been five videos a week now since I started my Lorcana channel because I'm also doing five videos a week over there. And uh, I just don't have time to make 12 or 14 videos a week given that I have a full career. You know, There are ways that I've thought about changing the channel. Like not changing the channel. I shouldn't use that word. But ways of breathing it into life, the problem is I need time. Time is not a luxury I really have right now. And I'm trying not to overwork myself. I'm really trying to stick to 80-hour weeks. 80-hour weeks with my main career, plus running a card shop, plus content creation. I'm, like, trying to stay in 80. I'm trying. So what's really interesting besides that is that YouTube is still performing well. I, you know, it's still a reasonable paycheck for the, the, the amount of time I put into YouTube. If you compare it, if you divide it by the number of the, the pay I get from YouTube, divide by the number of hours I put into YouTube, it's actually okay. It's fine. It's great. Uh, but really, Twitch is what's growing right now. Twitch is going nuts for me. Uh, on top of that, uh, Metafine and Patreon are also income sources. So, you know, if the YouTube channel does die, you know what I mean? Well, I got other sources. And if, worst case scenario, everything dies, and I can't be a content creator anymore, I still have a career as an accountant. And making almost six figures just doing that. Not including anything else like this I do in my life. I think I'm fine. I appreciate this guy's concern, or dickery, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, everything's fine. Do not worry. A few more comments to go. We got uh, Rosario. I think we should also compare Digimon TCG to One Piece TCG, both same company. However, we can clearly see which one is getting more love than the other. If you go and see the determined prizes they get, the cards in it are all are alt arts, even the event pack cards, which are similar to Digimon's, but they are alt arts. They even give you a position sleeve in addition to the other packs. It's just true. It's right. And you can tell which game right now is the bigger challenge, or the bigger, biggest favorite child. One Piece is the bigger IP. So it only makes sense that that game gets the most love. But again, hopefully they can change to Digimon and give Digimon some love. Last comment today goes to Captain Gamer. Mario's literally never recovered from Dorbikmon, still covers it every time. Yes, I have Dorbikmon and Ragnarok PTSD. Those cards annihilated me. They touched me in my no-no place, and I did not consent to that. So I will never, never be able to shake those cards. And they're still good to solve my cup. And that's really scary. But yeah, that's it for this week's comment review. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, of course. And I will see you guys later. Bye.